How's it going there guys? I've got quite an interesting video for you today. It's going to be an experiment in order to try and determine just how effective drizzling is at restoring resolution versus a higher resolution native capture. So in order to try and put this together and find out for myself just how effective it is as well, I've put together a test. And what we're going to be looking at is data from both of my SQA telescopes. So the SQA 55 and the SQA 106 both pitted against one another, if you like, with this, <laughs> for want of a better way of putting it. And I've been using the exact same camera in both cases as well, so which comes with the same filters. It's QHY Minicam 8, basically, so a 585 cooled monochrome camera. Now, drizzling is it, it's wonderful, but it is a bit of a lossy kind of process. It does cost you some signal to noise ratio in the uh, the process of restoring that lost resolution, if you like, uh, or interpolating it perhaps might be the right way to put it. I'm really not that sure about how exactly to word it. Uh, and I think there are also going to be some very observable signal to noise ratio differences to talk about on this. So if you want to kind of take a look at what I'm talking about immediately with this, all these shots are the same amount of time. Uh, the images I'm about to show you are all about, you know, built up from roughly two hour sessions uh, in terms of what I've done. The SQA 55 data, the one that I actually drizzled in order to try and make it go up uh, more towards the SQA 106 data along the top right here. That was hand selected out of a huge kind of batch of data of about 400 frames. Uh, the frames that I took from that data, I did go through selecting again by hand and eye and made sure that every single frame was transformed from one another. So uh, they'd all dithered every single time, basically. So this is drizzling in a uh, probably a best case scenario, I would say. Um, every single frame that went into these masters has been dithered notably. So. We were talking just a moment ago, before I get ahead of myself, we were talking just a moment ago about some uh, some differences in signal to noise ratio. And I think the sulfur over here on the right probably shows it best. Now, obviously, this is the full frame view on all three images. So the SK106 sulfur shot on the top right is really rich by comparison. You know what I mean? If we take a look at that same kind of field of view on the SK55 drizzled, almost looks like it's practically disappeared there is a huge difference and obviously part of that difference is down to the uh, the aperture now part of me wonders if my sqa 55 data that i captured uh, on these bottom two sets of uh, three right there was slightly up against the read noise kind of wall i did make all of my captures with a high conversion gain mode enabled so uh, it, it was down to like one electron read noise on this thing. And I felt like the sub lengths at two minutes each at that kind of gain were, were sort of long enough, but maybe they weren't looking back as it seems like the, the kind of naturally richer signal that comes through a bigger aperture, even though both of these telescopes are f4.8, um, has completely swamped all the read noise present um, on the SQA 106 data. That same camera though through that smaller optic and it is quite clearly noisier as you can see even between the sk55 at native and drizzled so bottom middle and middle in the oxygen where if you're just going to draw your attention to that a moment you can see the native is quite a lot more signal rich than the drizzled there's that cost in play right away whereas if you're in a much more signal rich environment that cost seems a little less let's say in the hydrogen alpha frames on the left hand side you know you can barely see a difference in terms of uh, signal to noise ratio it's there but it's not that notable the sulfur kind of the same story it's just about rich enough where the differences aren't you know they aren't massive but there it is there is still a difference but once again if we compare that same region on a on a relatively challenging channel if you will it is quite notable there there is there is a, a a massive difference in overall signal to noise ratio not just observable by the way in the nebula uh kind of signal that's coming through but all the background stars too i'm not sure you can see but it's swamped in background stars on the sk106 they're all beautiful but there they are um so i think if we 
trying to zoom in a little bit now and take a look at what actually came of this test. So um, up in the uh, top portion of the Cygnus wall right there, you can see there is a, a little pair of stars. There are some flecks of nebulosity just there, like bot globules. And there's also this, this little uh, shape right here. Not sure what it is, but I always kind of look to it as a good mark of how much resolution I'm capturing. If this is well resolved and well separated and looks detailed, I'm, I'm going to quite confident that I'm going to get a nice capture of this region. So if we just punch a long way in, this is, you know, quite the zoom. Compare that same sort of uh, size over on uh, the SQA55. I'll just pop this right here. I just made a mistake there trying to <laughs> copy the field of view across on these two vastly different images. So that's close enough. And over here we've got about the same sort of thing going on. I mean, now you can see, of course, the stars do look a lot better on the drizzled image. The rest of it, though, it's not a massive difference on an optic like this, I don't think. If we just undo Blur Exterminator, by the way, on all three, you can see the effect that that has as well. I mean, I have these tools. I'm definitely going to use them on any image that I capture, so why not show you that? as well uh so if we just redo blur exterminator on the bottom undrizzled sqa 55 data take note particularly of this uh, little group of stars right here for example you can see that you tighten up a bit it's not you know it's not massive it's already quite sharp so it doesn't really have too much to do just Take a look at that same sort of effect on this region right here on uh, the drizzled data however and redo BXT, the before and after. A bigger difference now. You can actually split these two stars comfortably and some of the nebulous detail as well is, is pulled in a little bit tighter, I would say overall, but it's still too weak uh, really to make much of. I think if we you know, quadrupled the amount of time on this thing, it, it might be slightly more telling in terms of the amount of nebula detail. It's able to be pulled out of something like this. Um, but if we just do that same thing here on the SK106, so before BXD, after. Again, some features are slightly sharpened. Stars are sharpened a little bit. But I almost feel like the SK106 before BXD is like still sharper uh, than the SK55 drizzled with BXT, which is perhaps something you would expect, of course. These are all tremendously sharp telescopes. But um, I've just found it interesting to actually have them side by side like this, comparing some data. Now, it's obviously it's fair to say also that we're not always just going to be kind of judging things from uh, unfinished single masters like this. So I uh, did combine the data into four different images for us to take a look at. So the top right, as you can see from the, the header right there, the SQA106 at native, the SQA55 drizzled two times. This is cloned and matched through cropping, not through rescaling or anything, to match the exact same kind of field of view as the SQA106 right there, just for easier comparisons. And then at the bottom, the SQA55 at native, the SQA55 drizzled, and you can see now on this slightly further on image, really the cost of that signal to noise ratio in this type of narrow band environment, uh, there is a notable drop off on that drizzled image versus the native image just over there. Now you could process that lift in image to get it closer to the right. However, I wanted to try and keep the processing applications just about the same rather than trying to make them kind of massaged into the same sort of shape. Um, I wanted the differences to be observable as part of this test. But I haven't done anything to, you know, hinder the image on the left. This is just how it looks. Now, I think again, as you can see, you can see that huge field of view difference. Uh, when we try to view some of those regions that we just talked about, now they're actually colored as well. Um, yes, the stars are nicer on the, uh, the drizzled image, but the signal to noise ratio being so much higher on the native image really makes that one take the win for me in this case. Again, that might change if, you know, I had a lot more data. It would have to be quite a lot more data to make that difference really up. But there it is. 
Uh, now if we really focus instead on the, the drizzled SQA 55 data versus the native SQA 106 data for a moment, just along the, uh, the top right here, take a look at a few different features, perhaps uh, this large lobe down here, uh, and this mountain, if you will. If you compare those two, it almost looks like a different part of the image, but it's the same. Uh, amazingly, th there's a stark difference. For the same amount of integration time, one is clearly far better than the other. I think there's no, no real argument to be made there. Um, this, to me, kind of makes me feel like just leaning into the natural strengths of the 55, which is capturing wonderful, flat, wide field images. That's what it's for. So it's been a learning exercise already for me. Uh, I think it's performed admirably, but there are just too much. There are just too many observable differences, do you know what I mean? To make me want to do that again, rather than just continue shooting it with the 106, for example, in this regard. Um, again, as we mentioned, those stars, by the way, too, in, in the background, you can see the, the SK106 image is it's just smattered with stars everywhere. This looks, by comparison, a lot more sparsely populated overall. And that's another, you know, signal thing coming through. Point sources um, are affected very much so by aperture. And I think that's just on display. <laughs> In, in full HD for you, right here. Um, but yeah, it's it's been an interesting comparison overall. I'd say I'm really impressed with both telescopes. Um, obviously, for close-ups, though, like I say, I think it's it's now totally clear in my head that yes, while well, drizzling can improve that kind of thing, and it can still be effective in certain cases. This really wasn't one of them, um, and this was, I feel like, one of the best case scenarios that I could have put forth for drizzling, where every single shot was notably transformed from the other. They were all checked. There's no bad data crept in there or anything like that. Maybe I needed longer subs. I don't know, but still, I think it was, uh, you know, a, a worthwhile comparison, and I hope you've enjoyed following me along on this one. I'm, I might go ahead and finish posting this image now of the SK-106 stuff, or perhaps just save it and get more data <laughs> down the line, because it looks actually really promising. I have to say, out of all the data that I've uh, displayed, obviously, on this uh, this image, uh, video rather, this actually looks pretty pretty good, and I think with a few more steps of processing, some you know noise exterminator applied and things like that, and some colour work, that could end up a nice image especially with some more time on it though but well, that's not what we're here for so overall i hope you've enjoyed this video i'd just like to say a huge thanks to all you out there for your support in all the ways you give it massive thanks in particular as well to all the people using my affiliate links for the bxt noise exterminator star exterminator tools you guys absolutely rock i really do mean it thank you so much for your support from using those um it's absolutely fantastic and it's really helping out me and my family so with that said, hope you found it interesting. I'll see you in a future video. Look after yourselves and close guys.